All right, this is, well, let, let, we have to do our usual opening. Oh, yeah. I'm Brent Leary. I'm Paul Greenberg. And even in Vegas, we are the CRM players. Except not in the way most people think of players here. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we're definitely not the kind of players that you typically see in Let's uh, put it Las this Vegas. Way. We're not, our rooms are not, well, I guess they are comped, actually, as a matter of speaking. <laughs> <laughs> but for different reasons. But anyway, we are glad to be here. We are here for Pega World 2018, and uh, it's already gotten off to a really good start. Yeah, uh, I like the robotic DJ part. <laughs> yeah, that guy was pretty cool. Although you're out of work now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. When when they start making robotic DJs, you and Ray have a different yeah life ahead. But anyway, we're going to talk a little bit more about a, a Pega World, of course, and maybe about robotic DJs. But we're also glad to have Jeff Nicholson join us. Right here, uh, he heads up the, the effort to run marketing, the marketing product here at Pega. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, great to be here. So yeah, the, I oversee CRM product marketing, uh, and uh, it's just an exciting event for us here. Great to have you. Would you actually say, like, this has actually been a pretty boring event for me, if somebody <laughs> Would you ever say something? I like would this? never say that. <laughs> <laughs> you would be a really bad marketer if you did. <laughs> I no, I, I, I'm glad to hear it. No, it actually has been. Really good so far. You think so too, huh? I, I like the opening. I mean, yeah. I, I of course I'm a big fan of Citizen Kane, and the way uh, Alan used the clip from Citizen Kane to basically blockchain. just you know blockchain that instead of uh, Rosebud. That was a really cool way to. And also the big. I had a picture of this, of uh, him on stage, and on the background there's a big uh, slide of Get Real, yeah. and and that. Pretty well sums up Alan's approach to all of these things Life and what's general. going on. Yeah. Right. He, he tells it like it is. And, and I think someone needs to, to be honest. And, and that's, you know, thankfully, a lot of the roles that you folks have. And we just see so much uh, nonsense thrown around from vendors in the space, from, from even people, some people coming in the space, that it's hard as, as someone that is buying this tech, technology, implementing this technology, to know what's real. And, you know, you can't make change unless you're doing something with, with real technology. So let me ask you this. So why would somebody believe you're doing that rather than Salesforce or SAP or whoever? Well, I wouldn't say why would they believe us. I would encourage them to talk to our customers that are here. You know, that, that, that's what Pega World is, is frankly all about. And most of the sessions, really all, are delivered directly by our customers. Okay, but they're already your customers. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you're out, you got prospects out there, mm -hmm. read your stuff, or they're interested in XYZ, but they're also right now prospects. You know, they're thinking of SAP, they're thinking of EM Online maybe, they're thinking of, you know, probably not Lava just because you, it can scale. But, uh, but they're thinking of someone else. So I'm saying, well, I'm them, and I'm thinking, well, why are you any more trustworthy than those people? Well, and, and I would answer the exact same way. We actually have a lot of prospects here at Pega World. And we find one of the most effective things for us and, and, and for them is, kind of like I was saying, don't, you already heard from the Pega people. Talk to the people that have deployed this. You know, how long did it take to get up and running? Did it really scale like you said it would? Mm -hmm. um, uh, was it intuitive? Do you feel this is really giving you that foundation for the future that, that you hoped it would? And just ask your clients directly, uh, rather our clients directly. And that to me is what Peg World is about. It's engaging with your peers and, and getting it straight. Okay, so let me ask you this. Yeah. Why are you a Peg of period? Why did you come here? <laughs> well, uh, I think there's no when? other. When? About two and a half years ago. Okay. And uh, you and I have covered this space for uh, over a decade. Right. And we've seen a lot of comings and goings goes back to this whole real comment that you said. Uh, really, when I got a chance to see all that Pega had to offer in the space of CRM specifically, blown away. Absolutely blown away. And it's the kind of inverse problem that every really other vendor has. Everyone says they do everything. But when you peel back the covers, there's nothing there. Here, it's just an embarrassment of riches, I would say, uh, with customers that will sing praises to the rooftops. And now, what it was is a, is a matter of how do we amplify that? And how do we actually get in front of thought leadership? And how do we make sure that the world knows about you know, all that it really is? And so that, 
Yeah, that's why don't you tell the audience a little bit of how we came from uh, the history? Sure, sure. I, it, it, it's been a, quite a big transformation in the space. I got into the CRM space, of course, back in the days of the portrait software. Uh, and it was the, the very genesis of the space of real-time decisioning and real-time interaction management with the earliest of early adopters. And what was very interesting in my career, at that time, uh, with portrait software, our direct competitor was Corient, okay? who, of course, was acquired right. by Pega Systems. Uh -huh. And uh, we, we had just tremendous engagements back in the, at that time. And really together, these two businesses really formed what is now an entirely established space. And uh, it's exciting to see the growth uh, of that space and evolution of that space. And now we see a lot of vendors all of a sudden using next best action and all this language that mm -hmm. we invented a, a decade ago really together. And uh, it's interesting to see it kind of come full, full circle. One of the things that caught my attention uh, during the keynote was Karim and his uh, talk about how AI and robotics are, or robotics automation mm -hmm. are meeting here at PEGA at the email level. And talk mm -hmm. about what that impact could be for companies who are looking to leverage both the power of robotics automation and AI. Well, it, it's, it's very interesting to me in a number of, of ways. We're seeing a lot of excitement around conversational interfaces. It's Alexa, whether you're having a conversation through typing chat. Email is, is also some, it's not synchronous, it's asynchronous, but it is conversational in nature. But it's all very unstructured mechanism. And it's easy for businesses to think that they have to rush out, which they do, uh, and think about chatbot strategies and all the like, and that's where a lot of the attention is going. But if they turn and look down, they can't forget about the fact that their customers are still emailing them in, in high volume. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's a lot less exciting channel, but it's the one that customers are, are used to using. And the, the, the way they're dealing with this is just back in like a Stone Age <laughs> a process. It's going into someone's inbox, they're on vacation, maybe it doesn't get replied to right away. Who's, who's responsible for this? I don't know. And so you end up with not just errors, you end up with frustrated customers that don't know where they are in, in that process. And do they even receive it? Do they open it? Do they? And so when you use advances that are finally here that can actually break down all that friction, uh, really across channels, including the older ones, uh, this is what the real opportunity is. Uh, it's to look at the immediate the moment that that particular email is received. It's opened, it's interpreted, it's understood. And in many cases, a case is opened immediately, a confirmation sent back to that customer saying, we've heard you and we've, we've already started the process. Here's the information if you want to see where it stands. You know, everything is now frictionless. Yeah. And uh, it's a win-win for businesses and the customer, which is what I like about that so much. All right, so, this, is, this is getting a little serious. Yeah, I, I was thinking. So I need to, I like this right. up. Now, Don Shoreman said something okay. that really he, captured my He says attention. a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He's good about saying a lot. Yeah. Um, but he said, but you mentioned Alexa, uh, kind of mm -hmm. a, one of my interests right now. Um, he said that his kids actually have a better interaction relationship with Alexa than with him or his wife. Now, is that the same in your household? Is is Alexa kind of getting between you and your kids or things like that? So I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> uh, I, I find Alexa likes to all of a sudden think I'm talking to her uh, when I'm not. She's she wakes up and, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Because, you know, I'm not talking to you. You shouldn't understand Be quiet. <laughs> um, but I will say uh, it does understand my kids, and, and, they, and they do have a very quick l learning curve. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I implemented, uh, we were just talking about smart homes. Of course, I have kids in the area of 9, uh, 12, and 14, and of course, they want to use video games all day if you'd let them. So one of the things I did with my smart home is I actually put a smart switch on the Xbox, and I can kill that thing on a, <laughs> on a moment's notice, Whoa. and I do. And it only goes on during certain hours on certain days. And it's old school kind of retrofitting, but that's exactly what I did. And one of the things I did quickly early on is integrated that with Alexa, my smart home, uh, until I realized that my kids had heard me tell Alexa, turn off the Xbox switch. Oh. And now they figured out 
they can actually go and say, Alexa, turn on the Xbox. <laughs> and so I had to quickly come up with a new name for that device, uh, which I did, and they haven't cracked that code yet. But uh -oh. um, You're not going to share it with us right now, though. <laughs> uh, no. no. <laughs> I <laughs> said they'd find that. Yeah. All right, so now I have another question, though. So you company talks about Get Real. You're mm -hmm. a Patriot fan, right? Okay. Uh, yes. All right, so mm -hmm. how can a company talk about they, Get Real? They really real do have, have five. A, no, it's yeah. not that. It's, <laughs> it's how real. can a Patriots fan say get real and like Bill Belichick. <laughs> How can a real person getting real actually like that guy? Because really, if you really, really, really get real, he's a horrible person. No, no, he, he really did win five Super Bowls. So, uh, he won 27 pennants mm -hmm. and World Series, 43 pennants. So, and you have to give them credit. Well, I'm a Yankees fan. Well, hey, You're a Yankee fan, and they're, but there are Yankee guys I didn't like. Well, the Rams have won one. Uh, <laughs> I'm to stay out no, of they it. almost won one. Yeah, they could have. Anyway. Um, I, I want to follow up. Um, what lessons have you learned from your kids' interaction with Alexa that may carry over to when you actually are going to have to start inter interacting and using stuff for your customers that are going to start eventually getting voice right? So what kind of things have you picked up that you may have to you know, pull over and say, you know, this is actually some stuff that probably is going to be working well with the corporate side? Well, it has to come down to utility. All right. right now, it's a lot of party tricks that we're seeing out there. And we have an Alexa skill as well. There's no, there's no magic in building a skill. Right. How are you going to use it to transform either way, the way a, a worker or an employee gets their job done in a better, faster, or less friction or cost-effective way that they can't do today, uh, or vice versa, to a, a, an actual customer of yours. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're in the era of party tricks. We have to get into the era of practical application. And that's how quickly are we going to get to that area? You think? Or is it a is it a way off, or is it coming faster than you might uh, things might appear? I would argue it has to happen in the next one to two years, or it's going to be a flash in the pan. I don't think it will be. Uh, and, and the reason for that is the only thing holding it back are humans coming up with those ideas mm -hmm. and finally putting some serious thought to this on, okay, how do I make it of value, of use, and do something that they can't otherwise do that I'm going to want to come back and back and back again. And so it's, it's people like you and, and, and the people on, on the, the podcast, and uh, they have to come up with those use cases. And un until that really happens, uh, it, it's going to be in this kind of middle ground. I mean, Brent and I have about, what, 15,000 use cases that we've talked about <laughs> in the last month and a half, although probably 12,000 are not fit for public TV. <laughs> <laughs> I pay TV. Yeah, that's okay, cable. <laughs> so, all right, so let's go to Peg's kind of historic message for a minute. Mm -hmm. So I've watched the message evolve from, I don't know, I really got interested in Peggle was probably 2010, maybe, something like that. And, you know, back then it was pretty hardcore VPN mm -hmm. message, and yeah. it was doing well. And then, what year was the Cordian acquisition? 2000? It was, I have to go forensically. To yeah, I can't remember, there. but it was around, you know, somewhere in there. Probably a little before that, actually. But, uh, and then I watched it evolve from there mm -hmm. to CRM, once Cordian did its magic and Steve Klaus came in and did his stuff. And then uh, I watched it go from CRM to customer experience, which was at the, at, at the last um, Peggle World, you had this fantastic speech done by one of your customers, best one I've ever heard of at Peggle World bar none, uh, from Lloyd. Yeah. I can't think of her name now, though, but she was great. Uh, and it was on customer experience, which was, you know, most people just weren't, at the time, though, most people were not thinking about Pega that way, so it was, sounded like a peculiar, but you handled it really well message. Mm -hmm. And now it's customer engagement at the most fundamental, level, which I completely agree with. I mean, I just finished a 335 page book on the subject. And so. Uh, and, and we hope to see that book eventually. <laughs> yes. Someday. <laughs> someday. <laughs> someday we'll, we'll get on to a CRM Plays episode. Why? It, not coming out in August. Um, so um, anyway, so 
But the net result was, if I take a look at the sequence, yeah. it's, that's a very hard corporate narrative to make that transition without somewhere along the way losing trust. But you guys did it, which is one of the reasons I, even though I haven't come till this year to a Pega world, is to mostly do with conflicts uh, and other reasons. But, um, but uh, I've never lost faith, so to speak, in the company because I saw the transition work exceptionally well. So my question to you is though, you know, there's product narratives and then you've got the corporate narrative, the big picture corporate narrative, which is the one I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Is how you even how you guys let's say in the as much of the innards as you're able to talk about, how you even think about that. Because uh, that's not again, you made a transition that I see a lot of companies fail at doing regularly. Make you from uh, from something that's basically mechanical, you know, in the way people think, to something highly emotional in the way they think, and that's and and you didn't lose any credibility as a company along the way. You didn't lose any, so, and that and again, I, I can see the sequence, but I don't know how you got to the thought. I don't know the thought process, so I'm curious as to how that worked. Sure. Well, the, the credit goes to Alan Trekler and his great vision uh, for seeing this opportunity, and a lot of it goes to this aspect of realness, certainly there as well. I think that transition that you've seen has been very authentic and, and methodical and process driven as you would imagine right. it would be. Right. And when you look at that, the evolution, the platform is, well, it's a platform that can do frankly almost anything. You can shape it to orchestrate uh, almost anything. And, and if you look at uh, the customer base as, as the business did at the time, you realize, well, a lot of people kind of trying to orchestrate this kind of customer service thing. And, th these, and, and also this sales automation function and mm -hmm. offers ha having the system of this quoting. What if we took the best practices and created them so that they just kind of come out of the box and maybe even some industry specific things. Mm -hmm. And it really did a great service to our customers because now they don't have to do the heavy lifting. It, it, it's purpose built. Uh, in, a, in a utility that had, had been wanted. Uh, and the, the opportunity really has paid off tremendously for, for our, our customers and, and, and the business. And when you think about it, it, it makes complete sense. And it did. If you think that a lot of the business process management, that's for getting rid of the friction out of the back office processes. Yeah. Well, what's happened in customer engagement and CRM? Yeah. It's all about getting rid of the friction yeah. For customers, yeah, you're right. Whether it's a, an employee engagement, uh, a digital engagement, or a self-service, otherwise, how do we get rid of the friction? How do we focus on one customer at a time and somehow orchestrate this thing called the customer journeys mm -hmm. across all of our disjointed systems and processes that are going nowhere? Frankly, you're still going to have them, pretty much all of them, next year, <laughs> even if you want to get rid of them. So, how do I succeed despite my infrastructure and focus on the customer and get that orchestration done? And it, there's nothing frankly better suited to solving that problem. Okay, so here's the thought. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you did, which I think you are the money about, is you put a lot of effort into the idea of uh, CRM becoming, well, operationalizing, by which mm -hmm. to me is, look, I mean, again, the fundamental theorem of my book, well, no, that's not the fundamental theorem. One of the things I, I talk about in the book is, uh, CRM become so customer engagement is a much larger market. Well, it's not a market yet. It's more of a protoplasm, but uh, but it's a, but it really is kind of protoplasmic at the moment. So a lot of I, I actually identified twenty nine different technology categories that would probably be a complete matrix of, for customer engagement. And there's no company on the planet that can do all twenty nine. You literally have to pick where you're going to play in it and then play. So you could call something customer engagement because so can a gamification company, so can a, 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 so can a customer lifestyle mm -hmm. management company. Everyone at CRM certainly can, but but the reality is CR, the, there's maybe three or four that are core things. One of them is operational business ops, which is going to be CRM. Uh, is transactional kind of ops, which is e-commerce. And that's a core now. And uh, customer journeys are a core. Customer journey orchestration management are a core. And I forget, I have a couple of those. Anyway, mm -hmm. but 
you guys actually saw it that way. I, I, the first time I've heard a company specify it exactly that way, which is CRM and opera, operationalizing CRM. Which is another conclusion that I find really interesting. I mean, I can see that one easily from mm -hmm. you guys because you always did that anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, you always did that, but now you're seeing it in the bigger picture, which really struck me from a visionary standpoint. But look, I mean, honestly, as visionary as you are, that's not the public image of you yet, right? The, now, it's gotten more of that recently, mm -hmm. but you have that long standing kind of Pegasus VPM thing, which was a good thing. It's just, you have to shake it off, you know, at a certain point. You're not that anymore, right? And you, yes, you might have, but you know, how, did, okay, so here's my question to you. On the other hand, if you look at your technology on the process management side, the pure best side, it's really good. Like, it's oh, yeah. really good. It's the best in the industry, probably, from at an enterprise level, for sure. Uh, how do you shake off the image and then keep faith in the, in the actual tech? So I, 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 would, I would suggest that I don't think we need to shake off an image so much as it is to really express that this is how it's being applied to it. This is what PEGA is. And really, the understanding that great experiences don't happen by accident. All right? And when you talk about this application of a process and orchestration of solving this challenge, it allows businesses to own it. Don't just talk about wishful thinking of, you know, we see people put uh, businesses put posters on the wall. You walk down the hallway, it says, put the customer in the center of our business. But they don't change anything. Hmm. Okay? Doesn't matter how many posters you put up, what are you doing differently? How do you orchestrate that to happen? And this is the fundamental change that's happening. And so what, what makes this, this event at Pega World so exciting are the, the actual customers that are sharing how they've made that transformation happen. Yeah. And they didn't just talk about it. They didn't just complain. They didn't say, well, but we have so much old infrastructure, it's too hard. No. They said, actually, we can do that. They knocked it together in 30 days, stood it up, tried it on one channel, added it to the next, to the next, to the next. And what Pega does uniquely is it allows them to have these strategies and stand them up quickly, but then they can reuse them anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you create an experience, a, a logic, a way of thinking about a customer, their context. We're gonna have a, a session later on that really drills into the topic of context and what that really is. And once you know that, how would you go and figure out the right thing to do for that customer? Once you orchestrate that, you just simply apply it to any channel you have. It's channelless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what the new world is about. This is this is the breakthrough. Yeah. Channelist, good word. That that was, um, for many years. I've been you know, unfortunately you wouldn't win this one because someone said it before you. But yeah. I actually hate the word omnichannel, even though it's the word that we use for you know getting past the multi-channel old concept. Yep. Uh, but it's not really accurate. I agree with you. Right. Uh, you don't need to be on every channel. It's impossible. No, no, not at all. And, and not only that, people don't think in terms of the channels they communicate on. They don't do that, right? So, yeah. um, so channelists, the guy who actually suggested, who was, used to be the CMO of uh, SAP Hybris, and now is the president of EMEA at Marketo, which is Jamie Anderson, okay. he suggested channels. You're the second person to suggest it, but it's really a good term. I'm starting to actually think of using it now because I really do think it's the right term. Because look, we don't, none of us communicate thinking about, I'm going to talk on this particular way of talking. You know, we just do, right? We're thinking about what we might say, but we're not thinking about how we're going to, you know, what channel we're going to say it on. You just, you figure out how you're going to talk and you do it. And it might be one that, like if I send an email, I could send an email that says, hey, uh, hey, so and so, such and such a company, I need you to give me your address via text. Now, the normal response of a company, is to reply and send it through email, which is really wrong, because I didn't ask them for that. I said I sent you an email asking for it from text. And, and the reason I asked you for text is I probably had a reason, because I wanted to give it to my best friend who needed it. And that's the way I talked to her or him, right? So, but the, most companies don't go as far as to read the email actual from the channel standpoint, but because which we're channelists, they're not. And so mm -hmm. they tend to just react to the channel that they receive. Right, and it's a it's a serious error. Let's say that, and it happens a lot. Do you think we should do uh, see what else is back there? I don't think we have enough time at this yeah. point, but um, I want to just get a quick uh, Pega Infinity was just 
yeah. and also came out. What are the, the takeaways that you want folks to know about? Well, this really reflects the next step change. And what we're seeing is, is the two topics that we've been talking about, this digital process automation and capabilities, the, the evolution of the BPM space, and now with tremendous advances like robotic automation, uh, that's the back end of the friction. And this area of customer engagement, CRM, and all the different advances that are happening there with AI, where it really is one. And we, we've changed absolutely you know, everything about that. It, it, the robotics is seamless with the, the, the AI and, and everything about it is just, it's actually one piece of code, one application. There's, I, I would say there's a, a challenge to find many vendors in the space that can, can say that. Um, and we've actually changed that even absolutely everything around how it's purchased and bought. So as an example, uh, when you buy a PEGA CRM application, it includes unlimited robotics. For that application. Yeah, that's What's the hardest part of a CRM application? In integrating, installing, getting it gone. All right, you have to go and evaluate the robotics vendors and, and spin all that up, and then there's all the licensing for that, and then it doesn't actually work with the CRM. It works next to it. This is in inherent, embedded inside of it, and it comes out of the box. Uh, but there's a lot more to, to infinity. It's a tremendous release, next best moment, not just next best action. Next it's, best it's helping, yeah, it's helping you see through kind of time and space and understand here's the right thing to do, but don't do it now. Oh, wow. Okay, and wait 10 me. days. That will be the next best moment where that'll be the right message for that context of that individual because we know that that's their cadence. Speaking as an yeah. analyst here, yeah. I'd make a point of that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, we'll, we'll make a note of that. I would also maybe sign up Dr. Who to be <laughs> yeah, yeah. a spokesperson for the next best time moment That's in right. time and space. You know. <laughs> yeah, and if you have a phone for the next <laughs> yeah. time. Well, and if you miss the moment, you, you get in the, you get the car, the yeah, 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 go, go to 80 miles an hour and you go back. <laughs> That's, and right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right, and on that geeky note, <laughs> I think we better let Jeff get back to it because there is a conference still going on. Yeah, and I will tell you this, you are lucky that Brent put the kibosh on the C the C level smackdown. <laughs> you, it, if he hadn't, you would have lost. I, just I can hold my own. Well, I, I put the kibosh mainly no, because right. I didn't bring my brass knuckles with me. So uh, yeah, I'm not ready for full preparedness. I think I have an extra set in my <laughs> But on that note, uh, thanks again for taking time. You know, we know you're a busy guy around here, uh, but we do appreciate it. It's good to you know learn a lot more. And I'm I'm really you know maybe next year it'll be Pega Infinity Wars. Right. Maybe we'll <laughs> Marvel Comics folks involved. That's right. I, I got to write that down. <laughs> that would be actually hysterical. Well, he said earlier today Pega Power. Pega Power. Yeah. Yes. I accept so. I trademarked it immediately, and I will sell it to you for twenty-five million dollars. <laughs> you know, I got. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, thanks again. It was awesome having you, sir. And awesome to have you. We're excited you're here, and uh, hope you uh, to see you again next year. And we'll Absolutely. do another episode with you next year, too. That's it. Okay, we are.